group that's doing an amazing job uh, in leading the effort to try to reform our immigration system and secure our border uh, is the Federation for American Immigration Reform. I've had them on a lot of times. They actually came here today. They've been touring the border earlier today. Joe Gomez is here. Joe, thanks for stopping by. Now, tell me, did you smell our border today? <laughs> and, I, and I ask smell because yeah. of the raw sewage oh my God. that Mexico continually dumps uh, uh, here in San Diego. So so it's quite a sight to see, right? You, yeah. get, to, you get to tell everyone across the nation how bad it is. I mean, it's, it's remarkably bad. It's uh, I mean, I've been to El Paso. I've been to McAllen. Uh, I've been all along the Texas-Mexico border. But, Cal uh, but California, Tijuana, and the San Diego metropolitan area, Chula Vista, what have you. I mean, that... It, you have some real, real toxic waste, uh, you know, environmental problems going on there that I've never seen yeah. before. I mean, it hurt my lungs. We were standing on the in the Tijuana Riverbank, which was dry, but for the toxic sewage, and my eyes were watering, yep. and it was hard to breathe. And I went home, and that's I went back to the hotel. That's all I could smell the entire evening. It was just awful. Well, we wanted we want want Trump to build a wall, but we want him to build a toilet down here too. <laughs> build a wall, build a toilet, and call it a day. All right, so let's talk sanctuary state. Uh, the, the Democrats say that the reason why they want a sanctuary state is that. Uh, number one, if you oppose a sanctuary state, you're racist, which is nonsense. But number two, that if we have sanctuary city policies, it actually helps people report crimes like domestic violence and sex trafficking and drug trafficking. You've done a study that just got released today that shows that that's all nonsense. Right, yeah. We released this uh, new analysis that shows that sanctuary policies do not promote cooperation with police. Uh, they make communities less safe. Uh, basically, the argument from open borders advocates is that oh, if you have sanctuary policies and you have illegal aliens that know that they can exist in this community, that they're going to be more apt to cooperate with law enforcement, knowing that they're not going to be, you know, caught for being here illegally and suddenly deported. It doesn't happen. I mean, if you have sanctuary policies, what you end up doing is releasing criminals back out into the streets because they're not. You have local police officers not following ICE detainer policies, not working with federal immigration rules. So if you have some Somebody who, let's say, I don't know, hit a couple of cars, and they hit a couple of cars last week, um, they're going to be released back into the streets. And guess what? Immigrants, even illegal immigrants, are going to be impacted by releasing a dangerous criminal alien back onto the streets. So no, sanctuary policies do not help the immigrant community. Here are the, 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 uh, uh, the data sets from the... Um uh, fair analysis that was, was released today. No documented ev evidence indicating any illegal alien has ever been deported solely as a result of reporting a crime or volunteering information to the police. And I still ask Democrats, show me one person, show me right. just one person who's been deported because they reported a crime to police and they've yet to do it. They continue to invoke this specter that somehow poor Lapita is going to be, you know, uh, deported because she's re reporting that she got beaten up by her boyfriend. But the reality is, no. And don't we happen. have don't we have a federal law that says that she can get a special visa to remain in the country while she testifies? Absolutely. Yes. I, I mean, mean, this is already law. If her testimony leads to a conviction, she can actually get citizenship. Get, right. She can yes. get legal status. So why would she be you know why would she be discouraged from reporting a crime? It, it makes absolutely no sense. That argument is a complete uh, nonsensical argument. Right. Uh, reluctance to report crimes has more to do with lack of trust in the police. Uh, back in their homelands, that they don't trust police in their homelands. Right. And again, this is part of this whole division in this country of, you know, people continue to say that police officers are somehow uh, corrupt or uh, racist and trying to get us. Some of that is coming from this immigrant community where they had bad experiences in their homelands. We have a whole bunch of protocols and protections here. We can always improve. Uh, and then finally, you have the, B the Bureau of Justice Statistics uh, in your report, which I, I think this is important that people hear about. Your report shows that 68% of released prisoners wind up being arrested for another criminal offense within three years, and 76% end up being rearrested within five years. And so in other words, we should deport these people because if you committed a crime once, right. the, the data shows it's likely going to happen again. Well, exactly, and they've already committed, I guess, technically one crime, and that would be by crossing into the United States illegally. But sanctuary city policies do not really apply to those people. Sanctuary city policies only benefit one group. People who are here illegally, comma, 
who've committed another violent crime. Right. That's who's protected here. Well, it's absolutely. not illegal immigrants that are are, are protected or, or 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 targeted here. This is not a sanctuary city policy. This is a criminal sanctuary policy. Uh, that's great. That's a great turn of phrase, Carl, and you're absolutely right. And if you look at what happened in Oakland, let's say, where you had uh, all those uh, hundreds of illegal aliens that escaped detection based on the Oakland mayor's tip-off, uh, knowing about the ICE raid coming up, there were we, we saw that there were there were certain numbers of them that had went on to uh, to actually commit violent offenses, and there were some that were actually uh, looked at uh, because they had committed uh, prior violent offenses like uh, crimes against uh, children, for instance. So, I mean, look, the, the bottom line is this: if you're a criminal and, I, and, and you, you know you're going to knock off a bank, and you know they're going to take you away, but they're going to let you back out on the street. Why wouldn't you want to live in a place like San yeah. Francisco or Oakland? It makes per it, not only that, but the cartels are also using it as a promotional tool, as a brochure almost. Like, come on, well, we're going to take you to the land of milk and honey, but we're going to take you straight to Disneyland, almost literally. And you know, the reason why California's form of sanctuary state is so noxious, so reprehensible, is that at the same time that they are shielding illegal immigrant criminals and re-releasing them into the streets, they've also recategorized under Prop 47 a bunch of crimes from felonies to misdemeanors. So in oh, most wow. cases, they're not even prosecuted for doing bad things, stealing, <laughs> burglarizing, uh, running a, a you know D DUI, uh, you know, domestic violence. What they're doing is they're saying, well, we're not going to, we're not going to punish you. You got a misdemeanor, pay your fine, and all is well. We don't want those people right. recommitting those crimes. And in California, it's a double punch to public safety in that they are coddling all prisoners and they're particularly coddling illegal immigrant pr uh, criminals. Right, which I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I don't understand. I mean, I guess the, you know, the politicians somehow try to drive this into some sort of a racial issue. But I've talked to immigrants, I've talked to people that have come from all over the world, regardless of race. And for them, it's an issue of public safety. It's not an issue of race. And it's remarkable that, you know, that politicians in, in California try to turn that into it and try to make it a national uh, issue about race. But when in, act in actuality, it's about, it's about national safety. It's about keeping your neighbors safe. It's about how would you want to feel and how would you want your neighbor to feel? I mean, it's, 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 sanctuary policies are remarkably bad things, and uh, I'm glad to see the tide is finally turning. I think we all aren't fair in California. Yep. Now let's, let's talk uh, in just a moment about how we're going to galvanize and organize the campaign in California to finally repeal, for once and for all, the sanctuary state policies and the whole alphabet soup litany of other special consideration that our politicians are giving illegal immigrants like free health care, free legal services, in-state tuition discounts, the list goes on and on, coming up with the Federation for American Immigration Reform, but first traffic. Um, what we need to do is we need your help because mm -hmm. after we get uh, past these legal challenges uh, that Trump's uh, DOJ has filed, and I think it will take care of some of the laws, like the uh, the muzzling of small businesses, uh, right. you know, threatening them with ten thousand dollar fines and prosecution. Uh, perhaps some of the, uh, the, the 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 restrictions on local law enforcement will be dealt with, but there will still be some really bad policies on the books yeah. in California giving free legal uh, defense to illegal immigrants at taxpayer expense, in-state tuition discounts, uh, free health care for life. I mean, these are things that, you know, most taxpayers don't know about. And there will still be remnants of the sanctuary state bill still upheld by the courts, unfortunately. So what we want to do is file an ironclad ballot measure, qualify it, and we're going to do it methodologically. We would love to have FAIR give us your best policy advice every step of the way. Would you guys commit to doing that? Well, we're, we're a nonprofit organization committed to uh, immigration reform, restricting immigration, creating an immigration policy where the best and brightest come in, a merit-based system. If you're asking for advice, I would say we would give you advice whether you're a Democrat or Republican so long as you believe in what we believe in. 
Right. So, Carl, look, I mean, you're, it sounds like you're kind of talking our language here. When you talk about ending sanctuary policies, when you talk about trying to reduce illegal immigration, change to American system, stop illegal immigrants from basically sucking dry uh, the American taxpayers' dollars that they're, they're pouring into the system, um, uh, why, wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't FAIR, or any American for that matter, uh, support that? I mean, we're paying taxes. Somebody who's here in the country illegally is taking that money out of your pocket. Because what we want to do is make sure that when we file, because I did my pension reform initiative in 2012, and that got sued three times, and we won all three lawsuits, and it's still the law, yeah. uh, and we're saving money. Um, when we did the gas tax repeal initiative, the, the recall first, they sued us, and they've lost on the recall. Uh, and on the gas tax repeal, we know that it's ironclad because it's a constitutional amendment. Um, but when it gets to Sanctuary City, we know that they are really going to yeah. get upset. They're going to file lawsuit after lawsuit. So we want to make sure that our text, our initiative, is on solid legal ground. So we're going to need help with that. If you guys could connect us with attorneys, and the experts, and legal minds, that would be great. But also, to the issue of small business owners who are out there, and they're, they're being told that if you cooperate right now with the federal government, if you provide information, uh, if you allow ICE to step foot on your property, that you're going to get uh, sued or fined, what advice would you give those small business owners? What sort of help and, and, and support services, defense services, are available for them? It, it, that's such a tough issue, and I think it goes state by state, you know. Some of these small businesses are stuck with, you know, do they violate federal law or do they violate state law? And are they more likely to be fined uh, by the state than by the feds? And will the state protect them or shield them in some fashion or another, or will the state go after them? And, and it sounds like in California, based on its sanctuary law, I mean, they're really predatory uh, towards uh, employers who want to make sure that they don't have illegal aliens, that they're not hiring illegal labor. So. The, the, my, the advice is to follow the Constitution, to follow the federal immigration laws, but it's unfortunate because it seems like in doing so, it, in, with ha having these employers following the rule of law, they're being unfairly punished by the state because the state has a constitutional measure that prohibits them from doing it, and it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. I mean, I, it, I, I, we've never seen anything like this before, what's happening in California, and I, my heart really goes out to some of these people who are good Americans, small business owners want to do the right thing, but they're forced, they're forced to hire illegal labor. Well, I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned, not only for uh, their safety, because obviously they don't like seeing criminals re released into the community uh, to recommit crimes, which your study shows 76% right. of them do so within a matter of years. Uh, but also, we have, we have small business owners who are just trying to do right. They don't want to tell the federal government, you know, sorry, I'm not going to cooperate. No. You know, uh, they don't want to be obstinate. They want to really do what's right, and uh, yet they feel like they're being put in double jeopardy here. Right. Um, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And so we appreciate the work you're doing to try to give them some support and good luck. And uh, glad you enjoyed your trip to the border. <laughs>